We're going to start. Okay. So this week I was asked to create a sequence around balancing. And I noticed, and Roberta apologized in advance. And I noticed that each time I went to balance, I could not balance for, this, for the life of me. Like, and it's generally not an issue for me. I generally can stand on one leg and talk to you guys and tell somebody else what to do and manage a bunch of different plates. But this week was not happening. I just could not stand up at all. Like every time I lifted a leg, I seemed to fall over. And every time I wanted to do it again, I tried even harder and it still fell over. And I tried even harder and I still fell over. And it sort of made me realize something that I'd sort of forgotten along the way. I think what happens when people balance in a yoga contest is they try to hold on, they try to root down and they try to squeeze everything out, but that generally doesn't work. In a dance context, when you try to balance, which has a whole bunch of different names, depending upon where your other leg is and what it's doing, you don't just focus on the leg that you're lifting. You focus on the leg that's rooting down. You focus on your crown. You focus on your tail. You focus on the arms, how it all works together. But in yoga, we can sometimes just think about, I'm lifting my leg up and I'm going to stay here. And that's all that matters. And then we fall over. And I thought that that was such an interesting facet or an interesting parallel to life. You know, when we're trying to create balance in something, whether it's our finances or our diet or our sleep or our relationship, we can just become narrow-minded on that. And then we notice that there are more problems and it becomes harder and we struggle even more and we notice more problems. When in reality, we have to pay attention to some other things. So in our relationships, how do we pay attention to how we're taking care of ourselves? How do we pay attention to like whether or not we're breathing when we're interacting with other people? How do we pay attention to whether we've grounded ourselves when we're interacting with another? Or is it just like, oh, I'm going to focus just on Jenny intently, just like this, and hope that doesn't make you feel awkward, <laughs> you know? But so that doesn't work. So today in our balancing practice, what I'd like us to focus on is how do we pay attention to everything that's going on? Our balance will improve if we can keep things balanced, meaning my attention is going front, it's going back, right, left, I'm noticing what's happening internally as well as externally. So to that end, we're going to start by standing. And so I encourage you to bring both of your blocks or whatever you're using as block substitutes to the top corners of your space. And then if you have a blanket, put it somewhere off to the right or to the left. Good morning, Julie. And the first thing I want you to do is once you come to stand at the top of your space, either soften the gaze or close the eyes. And the first thing that you'll start to notice is how is the weight? Does it feel like the feet are evenly rooted right to left? Does it feel like you're swaying one way or the other, a little front or a little back? And then I invite you to move just a little bit. So maybe you start to sway a little right to left or front to back. And after you've gone right to left, maybe try front to back. And if you've been going front to back, then try right to left. And you'll just use this to find that our bodies are really smart. Your feet are gonna start to work. Balance is not this static pose. It's constantly a dynamic, relationship that's going on. And so once you feel like you've gone a little right to left, front to back, you'll come to stand in stillness. And stillness isn't as still as you think that it might be. See if you can lengthen down through the tailbone, lengthen up through the crown as you push down through the feet, soften the arms down, and then bring your awareness to the breath. Is it in the chest? Is it in the abdomen? And we'll take three big audible horse lifts breaths out. So big breath in, horsey lips out. Two more. Last one. Awesome sauce. Start to tone the back of your throat, slight constriction there and see if you can hear the sound of your breath. And then we'll start to build our breath and build our movement. So as you inhale, the arms will reach up towards the sky. And then you'll exhale and slowly lower the arms down. And you've got about five more of these. And I encourage you to play with how the arms move. Do they wanna come front to come up? 
do they want to go out to come down or front to come down? And as you take these last four on your own, you're just paying attention to how the breath feels, how it feels better to move the body, to breathe into the body. Balance is this very interesting thing that is a constant renegotiation. And as you take these last two sets on your own, I encourage you to see how you can possibly make the breath maybe a little bit longer as you breathe in and maybe a little bit longer as you breathe out. Awesome sauce. The next time both arms are up and over your head, you're just gonna stay there for about five breath cycles. You might interlace the hands and turn the palms to face up. You might take a gentle side bend right or left, but you're paying attention to what's happening in the feet as the upper body moves or as the upper body stays in stillness. And you're again, noticing what's happening in the breath. The funny thing is yoga teachers spend so much time talking about our breath, but our breath is really how we create balance. So for these last two breath cycles, I want you to lengthen down from tailbone into heels and press out through the balls of your feet. Lengthen up through the crown of your head and then notice where you can find a little bit more breath. Last inhale here, find more length up through the spine, down through the tail. And as you exhale, open the arms out to the side and down towards the floor. Great, let's add on. Draw your hands to the backs of your legs, holding onto your butt cheeks. Inhale, lift the heart. And as you exhale, start to fold forward. Bend the knees as much as you need to. Slide the hands down the backs of your legs until your hands touch the floor. Then inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale, fold all the way back in. Hands come back to the backs of the legs if they disengaged. Inhale, come all the way back up to vertical. Hands slide up the backs of the legs. Spine comes all the way up. And then exhale, you'll fold back in. Hands down the backs of the legs. Hold on to the backs of the legs the whole time these last few rounds. Inhale, halfway lift. Spine reaches forward. Tailbone reaches back. And then exhale, scoop the belly. Chin towards your sternum. Fold all the way in. Inhale, come all the way back up. Hands slide up the backs of your legs. Come all the way up to stand. And then exhale, fold all the way back in. Awesome sauce. Inhale, halfway lift. Keep the knees as bent as you need to. And then exhale, fold all the way back in. Last time, inhale, come all the way back up to stand. And then exhale, slide the hands down, the legs fold all the way in. Great. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale, fold in. Go ahead and plant your hands on the blocks or the floor. Start to bend your knees and slowly shift your weight right to left, letting the head dangle really low to the ground. And you're just allowing yourself to be here. Straightening one leg, maybe another, saying hello to the backs of the legs, backs of the hamstrings, noticing what it feels like really to shift your pelvis. And again, you're just still continuing to breathe and notice how this feels. Great, nice work, guys. When you're ready, go ahead and come to a still neutral spot. Bend both knees, plant both hands on the floor, and as you're ready, step back to a downward facing dog. So both hands on the mat, both feet step back. And again, you're just noticing how the breath is here. So we still have that constriction going on for Ujjayi Pranayama. Slowly bend one knee and bend the other. And you're just seeing how the body is relating. Things get out of balance when we focus on one thing at the exclusion of all others. So the body can become tight when we're only focused on one thing. It can become overstretched when we're only focusing on something else. How can we pay attention to the unique relationship between those two things? Awesome sauce. When you're ready, come to a still neutral spot, lower your knees to the mat, and then inhale into a cow-shaped pose. 
and then exhale round through the spine, cat. We've got four more of these. So inhaling, lowering the belly, lifting the tail, lifting the crown of the head, exhaling chin towards your chest, rounding through the spine, cat shape. As you take these last two on your own, you're just paying attention to how your hands are pressing into the floor. Is it even right to left? You're noticing how it feels to have the knees and the shins on the floor. You're good, Ava. And after this last exhalation, feel free to take any organic movement that works for you. So again, these might be some twists. You might go back to child's pose. You might do some little circles or stay in stillness. But you are the only one who is able to know what balance will feel like for you because you're in your own internal space, your own body. And you've got another three breath cycles. So if you've done something one way, please visit the other side. Nice job. And as soon as you are done and complete, We'll come back to a neutral tabletop position. Awesome sauce. From here, tuck both toes under, take a big breath in and exhale, lift your hips high, downward facing dog pose. Great, draw your chin to your chest, inhale, curl your pelvis forward into plank pose, rolling through all the bones of the spine, yep. Exhale, bend the knees, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. You've got three more of those. So inhale, tailbone curls forward into plank, articulating through the vertebra. And exhale, bend the knees, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Nice job, two more on your own. And you're just paying attention to the breath, balancing the inhalation with the exhalation. Awesome sauce. And this last time that you come forward into plank, we're gonna hold plank pose, fall in kasana for four breaths. If you need to lower your forearms to the mat, by all means do that. If you need to lower your knees to the mat, by all means do that. But you're gonna push down into the limbs that are touching the floor. You're gonna lift up through those inner thighs, lift up through the inner armpits. And notice if you can breathe, your sternum reaches forward to your chin, your chin draws slightly into the nook of your neck. And you're just no Noticing what you notice. Three steady breath cycles here. Can your exhalation and inhalation be even? Nice work, guys. Last breath cycle here. As you inhale, you'll shift your weight forward. As you exhale, lower it all the way down with control. Nice work. Awesome sauce. Slide the hands back so they're alongside your lowest ribs. And then you'll inhale and just pull the heart forward and through just a bit for baby cobra. And exhale, lower down. And you've got three more of those. Continue to press down to the tops of the feet as you lift up. And continue to draw the belly in as you exhale. Nice job. Awesome sauce. This next time, You'll lower all the way down, replant your hands underneath the ribs if they're not there, tuck the toes under, inhale, come up, hands and knees. Exhale, straighten your legs long, plank pose. Take a breath in here, I know. Exhale, hips high, downward facing dog, three steady breaths. And you're just noticing where are the places in your life where you're seeking balance? And does it really help you so much to spend all of your attention focusing only on that thing or what other small things might be playing a big part? All right, let's go ahead and add on. Inhale, gaze to the top of your space. Exhale, bend your knees, empty your belly, step and or float top of space. Nice work. From there, inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana, and exhale, fold all the way in Uttanasana. Great. Place a block between your shin bones on its second setting. If you do not have a block, just separate your feet hip distance apart. Inhale, halfway lift, and as you exhale, fold all the way in once again. 
Keep your fingers as close to the floor as you can. Inhale, bend your knees. As you exhale, draw your hands to your heart center. From here, inhale, bring the spine up to vertical. Keep those knees bent and exhale, squeeze the block. If you don't have a block, just imagine that you're pushing your pinky toes out wide to left or right to left as you push down into your big toes. And then we'll take three more breath cycles here. I want you to see if you can extend the ribs away from the hips and then everyone choose where you wish to have your arms. Balance for you might mean that the arms are forward. It might mean that they're up. It might mean that they stay at heart center. Only you know that internal space. Nice, Roberta, see if you can lift just, yeah, there you go, there you go, there you go. And then for the belly, draw the front belly back, yep. And we're just seeing what we notice. You got two more breath cycles here. Awesome sauce. The next time you inhale, stand up, reach up, look up. And then exhale, lower the arms out to the side and down to your hips. Nice work. Let's go ahead and add on. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up and overhead. Exhale, hinge at the hips, forward fold. Nice job. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, bend your knees, remove your block and step your right leg long and back. Highly encourage you to put your hands on the floor or blocks, whatever is easiest for you, but you'll inhale, gaze, heart and sternum forward. Exhale, press the floor away, straighten both legs long. And you've got four of these. So just inhaling, bending the front knee, coming forward. Exhale, straightening the front leg, shifting back. And as you take these next two on your own, do you notice if the inhale is easier or if the exhale is easier? And can you find a sense of equanimity between the two? Awesome. Ava, keep that front heel on the floor the whole time if you can when you come forward. Great. Awesome. The next time that front leg is straight, pause there. And you'll just sh maybe shift your pelvis back, maybe lift that left foot up and away from the floor. And you'll just pause and you'll breathe. Yeah, left foot, left toes up and away from the floor. Yeah, so fun. Hello, back of left hamstring. Do you notice that you probably stopped breathing? Can you still keep lifting through that inner back right thigh? Nice job, guys. Next in breath, go ahead and come forward, low lunge. As you exhale, plant your palms, step yourself back, downward facing dog pose. Option to stay right here. Otherwise, you'll just inhale and you'll come forward into plank. You'll exhale, you'll lower all the way down to your belly. Nice job, guys. And then you'll inhale and take three baby cobras. And as you're taking these baby cobras, you're noticing what you notice. Can you continue to balance the length on the front body as well as the back body? Nice job, guys. The end of your third exhalation, you'll come down, you'll tuck your toes under and straighten your legs long. Draw your shoulders onto the back, lift your ears in line with your shoulders and inhale, draw the belly in, exhale, push the floor away through plank. Nice job and back to downward facing dog. Nice work guys. And three steady breaths here. And you just observe and you notice what it feels like. How does the right hand press into the floor in comparison to the left? What are you noticing in your right leg as opposed to your left leg? These are all just little nuanced things that we start to notice. Awesome sauce. Inhale, gaze between your hands. As you exhale, step your right foot between your hands. So opposite leg now comes forward. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is what I used to say. Good job, Roberta. And then you'll do four sets on these. So maybe hands on blocks, maybe hands on floor, but you'll inhale and heart will reach forward. And then exhale, you'll straighten that front leg long. So we're just starting with this dynamic movement to help us start to see how the body is working. So sometimes we move a little bit to know how to move. Sometimes we're still so that we know how to be still, but you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're seeing how the body responds. You're seeing how the breath responds. Nice job, guys. Okay, so after you've done your four sets, you'll just shift your weight back. You'll straighten that right leg long and peel the sole of the right foot up and away from the floor. And then you just pause and you breathe. Your outer right hip draws back. Your yep, inner left thigh lifts up and you're just pausing and you're breathing. Oh, yep. <laughs> you're pausing and you're breathing and you're saying, hello, hamstrings, I've missed you. Or maybe not, but I've missed them. All right, let's go ahead and inhale, bend our front knee, plant the foot. This time you're going to walk your hands forward, shift your weight forward, step your back foot forward, back to a forward fold, top of mat. Yep, nice job. From here, inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana, and exhale, fold all the way in. Nice job. Okay, keep your hands on the outside edges of your shins. Push your shins into your palms. Push your palms into your shins. Inhale, lift your spine halfway. Exhale, bend the knees. Keep pushing shins into hands, hands into shins. Draw your hands to heart center. Knees stay bent. Inhale, draw your spine to vertical. Utkatasana, chair pose. Okay, now for this one, you might keep your hands here. You might reach them forward, but we're going to do some fun little squatty things. You might lift your arms up and overhead. This is totally up to you, but you'll inhale, come out of the shape a little. Exhale, sink a little lower, sit low. And we got four of these. Inhale, come up. Exhale, bend down. And you're still pushing your hands out, or rather your shins out into your imaginary hands on your shins. And exhale, lower. Nice job. Inhale, come up. And exhale, lower. This is our last one. Inhale, come up. And last time, we're going to stay for three breath cycles. Push down into your big toes. Push out into your shin bones. Lift up through your pinky fingers. Yep. And you're just noticing your breath. So how is the breath now? Can you hear it? Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Nice work, guys. Next inhalation, inhale, stand up, reach up, look up. And then exhale, arms open out, eyes soften or close. Notice the weight. Now, where's the balance in your feet? Where's your breath? Where's that internal sense of you knowing you? Great. All right, we're going to add on. Inhale, circle, sweep the arms, opening the eyes if need be. Exhale, hinge at the hips, forward fold. Nice job. From here, hands come to blocks. Inhale, halfway lift. As you exhale, bend your knees. Go ahead and this time step your left foot long and back. Spin your left foot to the floor for warrior one, but don't come up just yet. Press down into the pinky toe edge of that back foot. You might need to walk the blocks back just a smidge and then bend forward through that front leg quite a bit. Draw the outer right hip back just a smidge. So it's more like a warrior one, warrior two prep. On your next in breath, you'll bring the spine to vertical, your torso to the left for warrior two, and we'll come all the way up for warrior two. Nice job, awesome sauce. Okay, so now that you're vertical, notice if you need to separate your feet more right to left and or front to back. Great, awesome sauce. And then from here, we're just gonna do five of these. You're gonna inhale, straighten the front leg, lift both arms, and exhale, bend the front knee. And we're just paying attention to how this is working in the body, how the back foot is working, how our inner left thigh is working how our hips might be popping. And you got two more. Mm 
Nice job, guys. Go ahead and stay here now in warrior two. I want you to close your eyes, bring your awareness inward, and notice if you're reaching more to your front or to your back. Is your, are you balanced between your past, between your future and your present? Are you noticing how the breath is moving? Is there an evenness between the inhalation and the exhalation? Can you soften your jaw? Nice work. If the eyes are closed, softly open the gaze. Inhale, reach forward through that right hand, lowering the right hand to the block or floor inside your front leg. Sweep your left arm alongside your ears. And we're now in extended side angle. We haven't been in this shape today. So just notice how this feels. Can you continue to draw your right ribs, your bottom ribs under and forward, your top ribs up, and then press down on that left foot. Reach out through that left hand. Nice job. You're doing great. From here, we'll go ahead and inhale and come all the way back up. Warrior two. As you exhale, straighten your front leg along. And then inhale, reach forward, out and down. Right hand comes to floor end or block or shin. Left arm reaches up and overhead. And again, you've got three breath cycles on this side. Can you allow the right ribs to come forward and under? The left ribs to come up and back. And you're rotating from the ribs to see the top hand if you're seeing the top hand. Nice job. Take one more breath cycle here. As you exhale, lower the left hand to the floor, pivot to the top of your space, low lunge. Take a moment to plant the palms on the mat. Take a big breath in and then exhale, step your right foot back, downward facing dog. Option to stay here or if you feel like it would be curious to you, you can cycle through an up dog or cobra, but you do this based upon what your body feels like it may be needing. And you're balancing your wants, your needs, the desire to move, the desire to be still. Nice work, guys. Awesome sauce. So just for Roberta, lift your inner left thigh to lift your left leg up towards the sky. Exhale, step your knee to your nose, plant that left foot onto the floor, bring your hands onto your blocks, and then spin that back foot down to the floor for warrior two. And you're just going to pause here for a moment. Again, we're going to root down through that back foot, that right foot, like you're rooting down for dear life. Bend into that front knee and hug that outer left hip back. And when you're ready, you'll inhale and come up to Virbha Hadrasana to Warrior Two. Great. Once you're vertical, notice if you need to separate your feet more right to left, front to back, whatever allows your sacrum, that triangular bone at the base of your spine to be happy. And then when we're ready, we'll go ahead and inhale, straighten the front leg, lift both arms up and over your head and exhale, bend that front knee, arms open wide. You got four more just like that. Inhale, arms lengthen up. And exhale, bend the front knee. Three more. Press out into your journey. As you bend your knee, yep. And then come back up. And you're just paying attention. How is the body moving? How is the breath moving? And I believe you should have about one or two more. Once you've done five, I know I'm not counting. Okay, <laughs> once you've done five, you're gonna stay there, thank you. So funny when I'm like, I just realized I wasn't counting. And so you're just gonna pause and you keep pressing into the back foot. You notice if you can reach evenly through the right and the left. And then notice what's happening in your tailbone. Can you drop the tailbone? Can you soften the breath? Can you soften the jaw? The side looks a lot better, nice. And then you just pause and you breathe. <laughs> None of you could hear that, but that was amazing. I said to Roberta, this side was better. She's like, the television's like a mirror. So she's got a TV over here so she can adjust herself with the mirror. And so, all right.
When you're ready, you'll inhale, straighten that front leg. As you exhale, reach forward, out, and down. Sorry. Yep, yep, yep. Extended side angle. Thank you. Plant the left forearm onto the top of the thigh or hand onto the block or floor. Right arm reaches up and overhead. I just got excited for us to get to triangle. I'm so excited for our balancing pose and we'll see what happens when we get there. But you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're just noticing what you notice. And you know, it's one of those fun things. Yep, find more length on this side for me. Yep, and rotate the right ribs up back. Yeah. It's very interesting. Our balance is something that is constantly needing to be re renegotiated based upon our objectives, our goals. Hug that outer left hip back in, in Jenny. Yep. On your next in breath, return to warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. And as you exhale, straighten that front leg long and then inhale, reach forward, out and down, Uttita Trikonasana, triangle pose. And you're just gonna pause. My hypermobile people, please make sure there's a slight bend into that front knee. Everyone push down into both feet and hug your feet towards each other. And then notice if you can make your left side body, that's the underside body, even longer, wrap it under and let the right arm shoulder stack on top of the left arm shoulder. Nice, Julie. Nice work. Next in breath, see if you can lengthen your spine. As you exhale, lower your right hand to the floor, come to a low lunge, top of space, plant your palms on the mat, step yourself back to downward facing dog, option to stay right there or cycle through an up dog or cobra as you see fit. But again, you're paying attention to how the breath is moving as you do this. How is it moving through the body? How does the heart feel, the spirit feel, the body feel, the mind feel? These are all required for us to have balance. I mean, it's funny, the example I came up with was like, we all know that you can't just have a diet of sugar and that like lead to positive health. We all know this, but you can't equally just eat carrots and think you'll be fine either. <laughs> but, you know, you can overdo anything. All right, let's add on. Inhale, gaze to the top of your space. As you exhale, bend your knees, empty your belly, step to the top of your space. Awesome sauce. Once you're there, inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold in. Great. Please turn your blocks to the highest setting at the top of your space if you've got them. And then once again, we'll inhale, halfway lift, hands on block. As you exhale, fold in. Okay. Inhale, sit, chair pose. Great. Now go ahead and bring hands to heart center and then you might reach your arms up and overhead or you might keep them as they are. The next time you inhale, I want you to stand up and lift your left leg with you. Left leg comes up with you, flex through your left foot. Awesome sauce. Pause here for the next two breath cycles. Left toes are pulling up towards your left knee, reaching up for your arms, pushing down through your right foot. Nice job. As you exhale, cross your left ankle over the top of your right thigh, bend your right knee a lot. Hands come back to heart center or to those blocks or to the floor. And we're coming for figure four. Yeah, buddy man. Now, if your hands do come back to the floor or the blocks and you start to hinge at your hips, your butt may start to talk to you quite a bit. And I want you to notice if you can keep breathing. Keep flexing through that left foot, pushing out through the ball of your left foot, pushing down through your right foot, and then notice that you might not be breathing. Nice job, guys. Awesome sauce. Very gently, we're gonna come right back up. So if your hands are on the floor, start to draw them back to heart center, start to lean back, and then inhale, you'll stand up, reach up, lift that left leg up, happy days, and exhale, plant the foot on the floor, lower the hands to the side, close the eyes, notice what you notice, how's the weight in the feet? How's the breath in the body? How's the mind? Awesome sauce. If the eyes are closed, gently open the gaze once again. 
And then you'll inhale, circle, sweep the arms up and overhead. We're going to enter it the same way. Exhale, fold forward at the hips, Uttanasana, forward fold. Hands to blocks or floor. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, sit, Uttkatasana, chair pose. Hands might stay at heart center. Next in breath, inhale, stand up, reach up. Take that right leg with you. Flex through the right foot, pull the toes up, root down through the left, reach up through both arms. And as you exhale, you'll start to cross the right ankle over the top of the left thigh, bend the left knee, hands come through heart center, hands might come back to the floor or to the blocks. And the more you can curl those right toes back towards your right knee, you might notice that there's stuff happening in your outer left hip. And if you want to play with that, some of you will lift your outer right butt cheek up or lower the outer, yep. <laughs> or lower that outer right butt cheek down. And I'm just laughing. Jenny and I are laughing because Roberta made an oaf because she found it. Like you move that hip around and it's crazy, but your, your outer hip, especially from all this sitting that we're doing, it talks to you and it talks to you real fast. Awesome, sauce. And are you breathing? How steady, how deep, how full is your breath? Nice job, guys. If your hands are on the blocks or floor, you'll gently start to bring the hands back to heart center, hinging at the hips. Inhale, come back through that chair pose, reach the arms up, reach that right leg up. Yeah, buddy man. And then gently release the foot to the floor, lower the hands. Soften the gaze or close the eyes and three audible breaths. Like, how are you doing? I'm sure you were probably holding your breath there. That doesn't help your balance at all. Okay. Let's move on. Gently open your eyes. If your blocks are still on your mat, please move them. And then we'll stand back at the top of the mat, feet hip distance apart. Okay, inhale, circle, sweep your arms up and overhead. Exhale, hinge at the hips, forward fold, Uttanasana. Nice job. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, bend your knees, plant your palms, step back, plank pose, fallen kasana. Pause here for three breath cycles. Let's push the floor away so much that your inner armpits float up like happy little balloons. Lift your little tailbones back towards your heels as the inner thighs float towards the floor. And then the sternum reaches forward, the chin tucks towards the nook of your neck. Notice how the breath is. This is your last breath cycle here. Next inhalation, shift your weight forward as you exhale lower through Chaturanga. Inhale to Cobra or Up Dog, your choice. And exhale, lower all the way back down. Tuck both sets of toes under. Energize your legs long. And then draw the shoulder blades onto the back body. Ears lift in line with tops of shoulders. Draw the low belly in. And as you're ready, you'll press through plank. Yep, and then back to downward facing dog. Nice job, guys. Okay, lift your inner right thigh. Inhale, lift the right leg high. Exhale, step that foot quietly between your hands. Awesome sauce. Highly encourage you to put your hands on your blocks, but you do whatever works for you. From here, start to shift your weight forward until you lift your back leg up and away from the floor. So your blocks will probably have to crawl forward in order for you to pivot forward. Great. Once that left leg is parallel, everyone look down the line of your body. Make sure you lift up through that inner left thigh, flex through the left foot and push back through the left heel. Great. Walk the block underneath your right hand slightly to the right. Yep. Draw your left hand to your left hip. Bend your right knee just a bit, and then you'll start to stack your left shoulder on top of the right, left hip on top of the right. Yep, option to stay right there, or maybe you reach your top arm, your left arm up towards the sky, and you just pause and you breathe. Nice job. Gently, you'll lower that left hand back down to the floor floor or the blocks where your hips towards the floor and pause. Take a nice steady breath here. As you exhale, step that 
foot back and long. Pause. Yep. Plant the palms and step back downward facing dog. You can go ahead and cycle through or not. We're going to build on to that. So we're just going to see how that went. Great. Okay, let's try the other side. Inhale, lift your inner left thigh to lift your left leg up. Exhale, step that foot between your hands. Pause here, hands come to blocks. You'll start to walk your blocks forward, shift your weight forward, lift your right leg parallel to the floor and pause. Before you go anywhere, look down the line of your body. Make sure your right toes are pointing towards the floor. Press back through the ball of your right foot and then take that left hand block slightly over to the left. Bend the left knee as much as you need to. Draw the right hand to the right hip. And then start to open and stack the right shoulder on top of the left, the right hip on top of the left. Keep lifting that right leg parallel to the floor. And you might float the top arm up. You might not. Good job, guys. Awesome sauce. Very gently. There you go, Ava. You'll lower that right hand down to the floor or block. Square your hips to the floor. Bend the front knee, step the back foot back, step back, downward facing dog, then choose to rest either in down dog or child's pose. But you'll just pause and you'll breathe and you'll notice what you notice. How is the body? How is the breath? So one of the fun things about balance is sometimes you do need to take a time out. Sometimes you do need to just keep pushing and it'll let you learn something new about yourself. So we're just paying attention. How is it going now? Awesome, sauce. All right, those that are in child pose, gently start to make your way back to hands and knees and then back to downward facing dog. Great, all right. Inhale, gaze to the top of your space. Exhale, bend the knees, empty the belly step or float top of space. Nice work. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale, fold in Uttanasana. Last one, inhale, sit, Uttkatasana, variation of your choice. So arms might be back, they might be up, they might be at heart center, but you're choosing how you wish to be in chair pose. And then when you're ready, you'll inhale, stand up, look up, reach up. And then exhale, hands to heart center. Close the eyes, take a moment to pause. Okay, next little balance. Gently allow the eyes to open if the gaze closed down. Shift all the way over to the right leg. Fill that sandbag or that leg with sand and then float your opposite leg up. So left leg is going to float up. Now you can bring both hands to the front of that shin bone if you'd like and hug it in and see if that works for you. You can stay here, option number one. You can draw your right hand to your right hip and open the left knee out to the left, option number two. And you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're noticing what's happening here. Wobbles are okay, activation's okay, nice job. Option number three is to draw that sole of that left foot to the inner right thigh. Maybe you use the muscles of the leg, maybe you use the assistance of the arm, and then the hands go wherever you need them to go for you to balance. So some might be up, some might be out, some might be in heart center, and you're just pausing and you're breathing. How are you doing in tree pose? How are you rooting down through that right foot, reaching up through your crown and breathing for dear life? Nice job. Very gently, you'll release. Coming back to center, releasing the left leg to the floor. Nice work, guys. And then we'll try all of that on the other side. So before you go anywhere, just see how the weight is between both of your feet. Notice how the breath is. Can you take a big breath in and a big breath out? And then from there, 
go ahead and shift the weight into our left leg, filling that with sand as though it was a sandbag. Flex through the right foot, pulling the toes up. Maybe you stay here. Maybe both hands come to the front of that right shin and draw the knee in. Maybe you stay there. Maybe left hand comes to left hip and you open the leg out and maybe you stay there. And we're going to stay here for just a few breaths, even if you plan to go to Vrikshasana because it activates your outer hips, which helps make the balancing easier. And then maybe you draw the sole of that right foot into the inner left thigh, left calf, left ankle, wherever you wish to go for you. And then notice where you need to place your arm. So it's not just about that right leg. It's about the totality of your experience, the totality of your body, that left leg, the right leg, the crown, the breath. Balancing requires us to be okay with the minute shifts that are happening. Our body's always working. Nice job, guys. Nice work. Okay, gently you'll come back out. You'll release both feet to the floor. Yeah. Blowing tree. Yes. You know, actually the strongest trees are the ones that do blow when the wind moves. The ones that are static, they get uprooted when there's a crazy like tornado type wind. Never mind. They're flexible. Yeah. All right. Let's come back to the top of our space. Last little thing before we do our cool down. Okay. Are we doing okay? <laughs> okay. I get so excited. All right. Thank you, Sandy. Inhale, circle, sweep your arms up and overhead. Exhale, fold forward at your hips, Utanasana. Great. Hands come to blocks. Let's bring our hands to blocks. Shift the weight into your right leg. Float your left leg up and back, straight back behind you. Flex through that foot a lot. Great. This time, we're going to take that right hand over to the right once again, maybe slightly forward. Again, you're going to draw the left hand to the left hip, lift through that inner right, inner left thigh a lot. So the whole leg is parallelish to the floor. Then start to stack the left shoulder on top of the right. Start to stack the right shoulder on top of or left shoulder on top of the now that side's better, Roberta. And then you'll pause. You might stay here. You might lift the top arm up. And again, this is the second time that we've done this. So how is this going this time? Awesome. Very gently lower that left hand back down to the floor. Square your hips to the floor. Notice that you probably were not breathing during any of that. Here's our piece de la resistance. So I want you to lift that left leg as parallel as you can. Lift your spine as parallel as you can. Option is stay right here with your hands touching the floor or the blocks. Otherwise, your hands may come to your heart center. Reach back through that left leg, reach forward through your crown. You might stay there. You might reach both arms forward. And again, you're just pausing and you're breathing. You're noticing what you notice. Awesome sauce. From here, let's reach up through both arms. Come all the way up to stand. Plant that left foot. Come all the way up to stand. Plant that left foot, come all the way up to stand. Lower your hands down. Notice what you notice. How did that go? We're okay with balancing when things seem <laughs> normal. And then how do we freak out when it's a little unusual? That's really what balance is, how we can keep our calm in the midst of the storm. And our practice just helps us learn how to do that. Awesome sauce. Okay, so we'll try that on the other side and see how this goes. And whether you hold the balance or not is not the point. We're not gymnasts. You're not going to get marked off if you fall out of this. I want you to just keep breathing. Okay, so let's do the other side. Inhale, circle, sweep both arms up and overhead. As you exhale, fold forward at your hips, forward fold, Uttanasana. And then once you're down there, plant your hands on the blocks or the floor. Shift your weight over to your left foot. Reach your right leg back parallel-ish to the floor. And you just keep breathing. That's all you got to do here. First things first, step the left hand slightly to the left and forward. Bring your right hand to your right hip. And then start to stack the right shoulder on top of the left, the left, or rather right hip on top of the left. Erica, lift your inner right thigh for me a lot. Yeah, there you go. And then maybe you float that top arm up. Nice, Julie. 
Nice, Laura. Nice, Erica. Nice, Ava. Nice, Andy. Very gently lower that top hand back to the floor. Nice, Jenny. Nice, Roberta. Great. Now here's our piece de la resistance. Maybe you stay right here, hands underneath your shoulders. That's okay. Sometimes balance is backing out. Sometimes you can bring your hands to your heart center. Maybe you can balance there, keeping that left knee as bent as you need to. Maybe you reach both arms forward, kick back through that right ball of foot, right heel as best as you can. Yep. And then here's our fun thing to come to stand. You'll reach up through the arms. You'll hinge at the hips. You'll come all the way up. Hooray! And then lower the hands. Close the eyes. Move around in whatever small ways feel good to you. And notice that for many of you, that side felt easier. You gave yourself permission to wobble. You gave yourself permission to learn. You realize that we're not being judged on how we stick our balance. All right, let's wrap it up. Come to stillness if you're not. And then let's make sure we're standing at the top of our space. There we go. Inhale, circle, sweep your arms up and overhead. And exhale, fold forward at your hips. Uttanasana, forward fold. From here, just bend your knees, plant your palms, step back, hands and knees. So step your legs back and say your hands and knees. Tabletop, yeah, that was clear as mud. Okay, tops of the feet to the floor, separate your knees as wide as you need them to be, and then you'll press back to child pose. So you might keep the knees more narrow, you might widen them apart, but you're just gonna pause. All balance requires a rest. And then you'll notice, do you want your arms forward? Do you want your arms swimming back alongside your hip? You'll notice how your neck is doing. Does it feel like the front and the back of the neck are long? And then you'll notice where your breath is. Can you breathe into the low back? Can you breathe into the side ribs? Can you allow there to be a little bit more softness and ease in the body? Awesome stuff. And you've just got two more breath cycles here and you'll notice what you notice. Where can you soften any tension in the body? Okay. At the end of your next exhalation, start to walk your hands back towards your knees, planting them underneath your shoulders, bring your spine up to vertical and bring your bum to the floor. Okay. Now, some of you may need to sit on a blanket. Some of you may be totally fine to just have your pelvis on the floor. But we'll bring both hands back behind you like we're just sitting at a beach. And then let's cross our left leg over our right leg. Bend your right knee and draw your right foot closer to your butt. Awesome sauce. Some of you will stay here and you'll just push down through the right foot. You'll push down through your hands. You'll lift up and say hello back to that outer left hip. Some of you will start to hug your right forearm around your left foot and hug your right, sorry, left elbow around your right knee. And then you might extend that right leg long. And I like this personally because I can use my arms to pull my chest to lift a little higher. And then I can push my foot more into big toe mound, especially into the crook of my arm. And then you can stay. <sighs> You can stay still or you can move around. This is one of the things I do miss about in person. You guys would always make faces at me. And so I could tell what you were doing on Zoom land. I can't see the features of your face as clearly. So it's kind of fun. Um, and then you'll just notice how this feels. And some of you may need to lift your left hip and remove any of the flesh from underneath to get a little bit more sensation there. But you just want to make sure you're sitting tall and strong and straight. Yep. So Jenny, I want you to see if you can shift your whole weight forward. Nope, nope, safe come forward, but push back in the knee. How's that feel in your outer left hip? Okay, okay. And then very gently, you're gonna release the foot. You'll extend the leg long. You'll sit tall. You'll maybe wiggle the legs around, maybe not, but you'll see what that feels like. And then we'll try the other side. So both hands back behind you again. You're just laying here at a beach. Then you'll cross your right ankle over the top of your left thigh. Option 
to then just bend the left knee and plant the left foot to the floor. And you'll just stay here, pushing the hands down, lifting the heart up. If this already feels like this is a lot going on in your outer right hip, you stay here. Otherwise, left arm might come around right foot. Right arm might come around that too. You might extend your left leg long. And I like to lift that right hip up, remove any flesh from underneath it. It just gives me a firm purchase on my sit bones. And then you can see if you can lift that right shin parallel-ish to the floor as you push out through the big toe mound and curl all five toes back towards your right knee. And again, some of you have already gotten into this, but you can rock that baby a little right to left. Doesn't it? So the activation of your feet, Roberta was saying, it changes how you feel it in your hip. The feet are really interesting. The more you pay attention to that, it really changes how it works in the muscles of the calves and the hamstrings and it's coordinating the hip. So Robin, especially, I want you to notice how that's feeling for you. Okay, and then you'll gently release that, extend the leg long in front of you. And then maybe you wiggle the legs right to left, like you're a happy little kid, maybe they bounce up and down. Awesome sauce. And then we'll make our way on to our back. So my people in person, please flip around. People at home, you do whatever feels good to you. But when you make your way onto your backs, I want you to make sure your blocks are still somewhere easily accessible to you. So if you flipped around, they're near your head, which is pretty easily accessible. And then you're just gonna take a moment to pause. This is the best place to start to see how the body is balanced, noticing how the right side is, the left side is. Awesome, soft. Okay. And then let's go ahead and bend both knees and plant our feet firmly on the floor. Grab one of your blocks and slide it between your inner upper thighs. Um, Ava, a pillow or a blanket roll would work really well for this, something just between your legs. So because we did something or so many asymmetrical things, I want you to make sure your sacrums are okay. So we're gonna do about three sets of these. You're gonna squeeze at about 20% of your capacity into whatever's between your thighs, and then you'll let that go. And you'll squeeze and hold and then you'll release and you'll squeeze and hold and then you'll release and then you'll squeeze and hold and then you'll release and you'll do about four or five more of those on your own and you know I say about 20 percent you can go up to about 50 percent of your capacity but you're not trying to break that thing that's between you you're just trying to engage the adductors which are the inner thigh muscles so that they can open and relax. We spend a lot of time opening the outer hips in that last shape. So we wanna give these muscles the chance to join the party as well. Great, and after this next one, I want you to just hold it for a count of 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, relax. Okay, let's go ahead and remove that block. Open the arms out to the right and to the left. Widen your feet a little wider than your hips, maybe even wider depending upon how you like this. And then allow both legs to fall over towards your left side. From here, cross your left ankle on top of the right thigh, keep flexing through that foot. And the more you pull down with that left ankle as you lightly push up with the outer right knee, you'll find a fun stretch happening on your right side body. Some of you might stay absolutely there. Some of you might reach your arms up and over your head. And some of you might grab your right wrist and arc the upper chest over to the right a little bit as you curl your tailbone down towards that right knee. And you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're saying, hello, body. Sandy, try arcing your body to the left, your upper torso, yep, you. There you go. And then if you took that, gently release your arms, open them back out to the right and to the left, release the left leg, come back through center, take a moment to pause and see how that feels. 
And then as you're ready, you'll take the legs over to the right and we'll repeat all of that on the other side. So right ankle crosses over left, flex through that foot, pull down with that right ankle, push up with the left thigh. And you might stay there. You might extend the arms alongside your ears. You might grab that left wrist and arc the body up and over to the right slightly as you lengthen your tailbone down towards your left knee. And you just pause and you breathe. Julie, see if you can keep your left shoulder glued to the floor for me, please. There you go. Nice job. And then you've just got two more breath cycles here. At the end of your next exhalation, you'll gently release that left foot, right foot. You'll come back up to center. Three, square the shoulders and the hips so they're in one long line. And then I want you to just draw your knees into your chest for up and asana wind relieving pose. You might rock a little bit right to left. You might stay completely in stillness. But I want you to use this as an opportunity to check in. Okay. Come to stillness if you're in movement. And then once again, check in. What final shape or shapes might feel good to you? So happy baby might feel nice. Supta Baddha Konasana might feel nice. For you, you might want a bridge pose or something else, but you're allowing yourself to check in and observe. So one of the fun things about balance off the mat in real life is that it requires this constant negotiation between how we are with ourselves, how we are with others, how we are taking in external information, meaning everything that's not inside of you, and then internal information, meaning everything that's inside of you, the sensations in the body, the awareness of your heart, your mind, your breath. And so as you're in these last few shapes, what's the last shape, you're just allowing yourself to check in and adjust so that it feels like you feel complete and balanced and easy. And once you do, I encourage you to come to a symmetrical shape. So some of you might choose Supta Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together, knees open and splayed like a book, perhaps using those blocks or blankets to support the outer thighs. Some of you might choose to wrap the body with that blanket. Some of you might choose to just come to straight old Shavasana. What I enjoy about Supta Baddha Konasana though is it's supposed to be the most yin shape and essentially all that means is that it leaves us the most receptive to be open to what parts of life we need to let go of what types of parts of life we need to welcome in and so the first task before we do anything else is to make sure that you're settled so notice if your right and your left shoulder feel equal and if not move around until they do Notice if your right and your left hip feel even and pressing into the floor and move around until they do. Notice what's happening in the legs of both feet. Feel like they're equally touching the floor, both legs. The legs are long. And then bring your awareness to the head and notice how the back of the head feels, the neck feels. Does it feel like it's evenly resting into the floor? And similar to how we started, you'll take a big breath in and an audible breath out. Two more times. One last time. From here, just allow the breath to settle. And we'll, we'll end our class today with a body scan. And the task at hand is to not do anything. I just want you to bring your awareness to the part of the body that I mentioned. And you just notice what happens when I say that, OK? So we'll start at the crown of your head going across the scalp, 
the hairline, the forehead, the eyebrows, the eyelids, tops of the cheeks, top of the nose, top lip, bottom lip, chin, throat, right shoulder, right elbow, right wrist, right thumb, tip of index finger, tip of middle finger, tip of ring finger, tip of pinky finger, the palm of the hand, the right wrist, the right elbow, the right shoulder, the throat, the left shoulder, the left elbow, the left wrist, the left thumb, the left index finger, the left middle finger, the left ring finger, the left pinky finger, the palm of the left hand, the left wrist, the left ankle or elbow, the left shoulder, the throat, center of your chest, right side of the chest, center of the chest, left side of the chest, center of the chest, abdomen, pelvis, right hip, right thigh, right knee, right shin, right ankle, right big toe, right second toe, third toe, fourth toe, pinky toe, right ankle, right shin, right knee, right thigh, right hip, pelvis, left hip, left thigh, left knee, left shin, left ankle, big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, pinky toe, left ankle, left shin, left knee, left thigh, left hip, pelvis, abdomen, heart, throat, crown of your head. Now just continue to allow your awareness to rest in the body. You allow the body to just rest. You will allow your awareness to rest in that presence created. Just stay here for a few minutes and I'll let you know when it's time to come out.
gently return your awareness. As you come back, just take a moment to check in. Really notice what you notice in this moment. If there's any part of you that longs to linger in this shape for a few more moments or a few more breaths, by all means, please hang out here. Otherwise, we'll start to awaken the body using small, gentle movements. If your legs are still in Supta Baddha Konasana, close the legs together using your hands. And then you might extend the arms overhead and gently yawn and stretch in whatever way feels good to you. Start to make your way to your right side. And you'll pause there for about three breath cycles. When you're ready, you'll roll your chest more towards the floor. Press into your top hand to draw yourself up to a tall seat. And I do encourage you to sit on a block or a blanket once you're vertical. And for today, we'll plant one hand on our heart and the other hand on the belly. I want you to sit as tall as you can until it feels like your shoulders are over your hips and then it feels like your ears are over your shoulders. And you'll notice if you can relax any tension in your mouth, your tongue, your jaw, around the eyes. One of the things that we can find balance in, so there's often this balance between the gut brain and the heart. So the first thing I want you to do is just see if you can breathe into both hands at the same rate, right hand, left hand equally. And you're just feeling this. How does it feel to inflate the front of the body and the back of the body at the same rate? And so once we found what it feels like to breathe into the right hand and the left hand, I want you to see if you can imagine that you've got two hands on the front body and two hands on the back body. So now you breathe into the low back and the abdomen, or between the shoulder blades and the heart at the same rate. And then imagine that you've got two more hands. So now they're on the right and the left, that's the outside of the ribs. And so how can you breathe into all six of these hands, the two that are actual, the four that are imaginary? And as you're taking these last few breath cycles, and you're really focusing on breathing into the front body, the back body, the right body, the left body, the top body, the low body, Notice how you feel internally. The sense of balance is an internal thing. What's happening outside has nothing to do with what's happening inside, or at least it doesn't have to. And so as you take these last three breath cycles here, I'd like you to just set the intention of where you'd like to have more balance in your life, and how you might be able to use this principle of the breath to help you. As you feel complete, bring both hands to heart center on Julie Mudra. Press both palms into each other, receive the weight of the thumbs into your sternum and then lift your heart towards your hands. Soften your chin towards the nook of your neck and gently exhale all of the breath from your mouth. Take a big breath in, audible breath out. 
Inhale for Om. Join if you'd like. Draw your thumbs to your third eye. May our thoughts be clear. Draw your thumbs to your lips. May our words be kind. And draw your thumbs to your heart center. May our hearts be open. The light within me honors and salutes the light within you. Namaste.